the Hong Kong effect on Canadian, especially Toronto, Ontario real estate and Vancouver. So this is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto realtor, doing business for almost 20 years now for myself successfully and loving it. What is the effect of the, of the Hong Kong riot on Canada's real estate, on Toronto's real estate, on Vancouver's real estate? Okay. So let's have a quick review of the situation. I explain to you what's going on and why it's important to you to understand this. Okay. Any investor, any renter in Toronto, Vancouver, in the area should know this. It's very important and it's gonna, it's gonna directly relates to you. So here we go. What happens is a few years, a few uh, weeks ago, uh, the students of uh, Hong Kong start protesting uh, something in Hong Kong. I'm not going to get political here, but they're protesting. Uh, Hong Kong was a British colony that was leased uh, to, to uh, Britain for 100 years. Uh, the lease ended, China took it back, and now China is asserting its power. It sees Hong Kong as part of itself, and it wants to rule Hong Kong the way China does. Okay? China is not a democracy. China does whatever China wants. China is the superpower of the world. Uh, everyone knows China is number one. That's just how it is. You know, maybe we in North America kind of fell asleep, uh, busy with all our stuff, like uh, this beautiful hat that is made in China and I bought it for four Canadian dollars. And what it means is China has so much money now, they've been selling us stuff for 40 years. They've been working their asses off. And now they are gazillionaires and they can buy anything they want. So, you know, in Vancouver, um, there's a 15% uh, tax for foreign nationals buying uh, uh, Vancouver properties. Uh, why? Because that money from the Pacific coming in and basically pricing out the locals. So uh, that kind of worked. And then a couple of years ago, somewhere, sometime in 2016, that happened in Toronto too. And it worked a little bit. But what's happening now is if you were in uh, Hong Kong, you can't even get out to the airport because the airport is shut, it's open, it's shut. And in my opinion, it's probably going to be shut for a long time, very soon, okay? People won't be able to even leave Hong Kong, not alone go on the internet, send money, you know, they're going to they're gonna get located there. So, um, there's no doubt in my mind that China, whatever China wants, China gets, okay? We're just going to assume that for the sake of this video because it's very important to understand what happens if... So what happens if China gets what he wants is basically uh, Hong Kong becomes, you know, they gave him 20 years kind of a, of a flex period and now it's like, okay, now it's China. So a lot of people in Hong Kong are fearing that they won't be able to keep trading the way they do, do what they do, uh, their family properties. You know, Hong Kong is all about real estate. It's a very small space and within that small space, only even a smaller space of it, you can actually build. So the land is very, very valuable, one of the most valuable pieces of land on earth at the moment. Uh, <clears throat> so if you need to get your uh, stuff out of Hong Kong, um, you can probably come to Canada, whether if you're a um, Canadian uh, resident, you know, permit, uh, Canadian national, uh, or you're even a foreigner, you can still buy in Canada. All you got to do is pay, you know, either you pay the whole price of the condo or the house, or, or you buy, you pay at least 35% and more or less you get the mortgage. Um, and, and for sure for pre-construction for 35, uh, 35% you can get the condo. So if I'm in Hong Kong, if, if I'm in Hong Kong and I send them millions of dollars, Canada is a very safe place for me to put my money, okay? That's, that's an extension, that's survival for my family, myself and my fortune and all the hard work that me and my family have been doing for so many years. <coughs> <laughs> Looks like they're setting up a drum circle in the park, so once they start, I'll, I'll keep walking. But for now, it's a nice place. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, where else are Hong Kong can put the money? They can go to Europe, but probably Canada, you know, is the place to be. You know, it's the best place in the world. It's beautiful here. It's, it's peaceful. Look at these beautiful birch trees. What else can you ask for, you know? We are very, very lucky and fortunate to be here. And anyone else that can come here, like myself, uh, is very lucky and fortunate to be here. So, um, if I'm in Hong Kong, I want to come to Canada. Whether I'm Canadian or not, it doesn't matter at this point. I just put my money out and I want my investment in Canada. So, um, if I'm in Hong Kong and I'm sitting on a few millions or dozens of millions or hundreds of millions, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's a typical thing in Hong Kong, I can buy anything I want. So, I don't really care how much it's going to cost me to get the money out of Hong Kong, but let's say if I have uh, $10 million US to get out of Hong Kong, I go, well, that, that buys me about... 13 and a half million dollars Canadian even if it cost me 10% of get the money and all that even cost me another 10% of acquire the properties who cares I'm still left with over a million 
1 million, 10 million Canadian, you know, because the exchange rate is so good, because you have US dollars and our dollar, the Canadian dollar, so low, Hong Kong goes, I don't even care. Like, whatever it costs, it costs, just let's buy some houses, let's buy some condos. Okay, at the same time, you can imagine that the value of property in Hong Kong is dropping like a rock. And I already saw the, pro the value of the REITs in Hong Kong is dropping like a rock. Why? Because if you, the market always anticipates what's going to happen. So if you anticipate that bad things are going to happen, so your commerce slows down and your influx of money comes down, and of course all the weakest links, those who owe the most and don't have the cash flow, they're getting out of business, and then they drag, they don't they pay their suppliers, who don't play, pay their suppliers, so that thing starts at the bottom, at the weakest link, but then it, it quickly domino effect, like goes up and up and up, like, like a wildfire. So that's the danger here. The danger is that you can go into this domino effect that say Hong Kong loses even 20% of its value, most, maybe most, I think most expensive city in the world, or probably top, top there. Um, it can drag not only Hong Kong, but it can drag Beijing, Shanghai, and then whatever close to it, you know, maybe Australia, maybe Europe, and, and finally come here. What happens if we have Hong Kong or China investors that are relying on, on those cash payments that they get from whatever business they have, whether it's real estate income or commerce income, you know, export, they export a lot of stuff like this hat, you know. Um, so what happens if they get, they, they get us, uh, they start struggling. Okay, if they start struggling, then the world starts struggling. So we can get into like a world kind of recession here. Oh, that's a problem. But if I'm in Hong Kong and I have so much money, it's not a problem for me. Just get the money out, put it in HSBC, send it to Canada, call Yossi Kaplan, get me a bunch of condos. Here's the lawyer. Here's the deal in your name. You're allowed to buy property in Canada if you're not Canadian. You're allowed to buy property in Canada if you're from Mars, you know. You just need ID. So you can do that and we can help you do that. If you're in Hong Kong, you listen to this video right now, you're watching this video right now, get in touch with Yossi Kaplan. We'll find you the property you need, whether it's a one bedroom, two bedroom, condo, house, new development, existing, with tenants, without tenants, rental guarantee, not rental guarantee. We can do it. And that's the point. That's the point of this video. If you're in Hong Kong, you need to get your money out. You need to do it quickly. You need to do it with someone you trust. You need to do it with someone that can do the whole job for you from start to finish. Because it's not like you're in Toronto and you go look at places or look at the showrooms. You can't do it. And I know it more than anyone because I've never actually, never, any of the condos I've ever purchased, I've never been in them, I've never seen them, I always bought them on the phone, believe it or not. I bought a bunch of those not even seeing them because I was working with someone I trusted and that person did really, really well for me and actually saved me really good units. And what I did is I didn't mess around. I said, I want two units, here, here are the funds. Find me two great units, and that's what they did. It worked really, really well for me. Here's a drum circle about to start, so I'm gonna start walking and continue this uh, video while walking. Beautiful drum circle in the park. This is Toronto. This is why you want to be here, because you can just play your drums in the summer in the park, and it's totally fine. But all these houses around me, I'm in a residential neighborhood. You know, they're all like a million to a million five Canadian. These are these are about large, slightly larger homes. So. You know, uh, 700 to a million US. Not a lot of money. I mean, you, can, you can't get much for that in Hong Kong. You can get probably like a nice one bedroom and maybe like a, maybe an older mid-level two bedroom. That's about it, okay? So I can sell my uh, condo in Toronto and buy a house in uh, New Mexico in the middle of nowhere. But I can sell my condo in Hong Kong and have a beautiful home in Toronto. That's cool. That's how I like to do, okay? I like to see it. So that's what you're gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna stop here and continue in a second. Okay, Yossi back, part two of the Hong Kong effect on the Canadian real estate market. So, in part one I explained that the Hong Kong money needs to come out of Hong Kong. Uh, the Hong Kong money is made of US dollars mostly, so it's more and more and more valuable than the Canadian dollar and really it has a lot of extra. I got 35% more every US dollar I sell for Canadian, so I got 35% more and I can use that, so I don't really care you know, for the final price of the condo, how much the transaction costs, all that stuff. It doesn't matter. I just want to get out. Look at Canada. Look how beautiful this is. I'm just walking the street here. It's peaceful. There's a school behind me. I think it's closed now for the summer. 
I want I cross the street people let me people let me go first the truck then the lady in the van it's all good why why wouldn't you come to Canada and you can buy a property in Canada without being Canadian which is a huge thing so how do you do that it's very simple you call Yossi Kaplan that's me Toronto realtor and a mortgage broker you tell me what you want to find I want one bedroom I want two bedroom I need five condos I need 20 condos I want new condos existing condo on construction condo whatever it is lavender beautiful <laughs> and uh, and I'll find it for you I'll give you the lawyer's number the lawyer will c contact you via email or phone you send the money on HSBC or you know whichever system you like it's fine to your bank and we close it for you okay it's not the first time we've done it we've done it many times it's easy it's possible that's what we do I've had a lot of clients buying condos for me never even seen thank you so much never even seen the condo there's another person letting me here pass it's just lovely <laughs> wait till you get downtown it's not gonna be like that anymore but that that's how it works you send the money um, we pick the unit you sign you can sign the papers in Hong Kong because in Hong Kong you can find a Canadian Ontario licensed uh, uh, lawyer or you can do it remotely with an affidavit the lawyer will tell you how to do it it's very simple just fill a form go to the notary sign and you're good to go uh, we transfer the funds and then what you get back on your closing is you get your deed okay you get your deed that's your title it's Canada it's safe you know no one's gonna come to your door and take it away from you that's how we do it here it's fantastic okay so if you need but the thing is if you're trying to get all your money out of Hong Kong if you still can um, what happens to the people that cannot and what happens to the real estate in Canada well obviously if suddenly you know in one month I get 500 buyers or a thousand buyers or 2,000 buyers from Hong Kong or China whatever uh, all rushing to buy because it's a bit in the Asian you know it's like one does it suddenly they're all gonna do it it's a bit like that so there's a rush and when you know a thousand condos being bought in Toronto Vancouver or 2,000 condos that's a lot we do we do about eight to ten thousand units a month in uh, in the GTA in the Greater Toronto area, which is Toronto and, and all the suburbs. So you're looking at about eight million people here. Ten thousand transactions that includes uh, houses, condos, townhouses, and so on. It does that number does not include new construction. Uh, that's about two thousand a month on average, I guess. So you know you get you get anywhere from eight to twelve thousand units and let's say if a quarter of that suddenly I need quarter more, I need two thousand more, three thousand more a month, the price is gonna skyjack like crazy. If I have a rich uncle that comes with no problem money and basically says I wanna buy everything, I must buy it now, I must move my money out, I don't care how much it is, obviously they're gonna be the highest bidder every single time. So if they're the highest bidder every single time, what, guess what's going to happen to the prices? Yeah, you got it. It's going to go up. I think that's my path here. Okay, so if the price is going to go up, what are you and me, the locals, going to do? We are going to have to face a very sharp increase in prices of real estate in Canada. Okay, so that, that's, that's, that's a possibility. The other possibility is that there's so much already China money invested here and Hong Kong money invested here that in the case that they lose their jobs you know they can't do the exports they get blocked completely in that case they can't send the money to Canada and start defaulting on loans in Canada and that of course gonna bring the price down but at the end of the day it's a matter of volume what's more more buyers buying cash willing to pay top prices or uh, some people companies with the un unfortunate fortune to have to sell quick right now get some money out because I cannot pay I, I don't want to lose everything I invested so far so you'll see sell it for me my business is China you know I'm, I'm stuck in Hong Kong so just sell it for me put the money in a bank and let's wait that's an option too you know just because you can't pay you can't pay your payments anymore so maybe you want to sell it or put a tenant in or whatever it is but some people just want to cash out that's okay too so if I have 200 people cashing out and 2,000 buying I'm not gonna worry about it because it just it's gonna swallow okay that huge wave of buying is gonna swallow the wave of selling 
it's blue street, I'm gonna stay here, it's quiet. Okay, but if there's more people selling than buying, of course the prices go down. But in this case, to me, it looks like we're gonna see a lot more buying than selling. So you're gonna feel it first in Vancouver, and if it's not Vancouver, it's gonna be Toronto. And if it's not Vancouver or Toronto, it's gonna be next one down, which is uh, the 905, okay? And 905 is very important. So there you have it. So, in my opinion, chances are that we'll see massive buys of property in Canada, probably for cash, probably for maximum price, probably for any price, because remember, when I have that million dollar US, it's 1.3, 1.35 Canadian. Even if it costs me an arm and a leg to bring the money over to Canada, even if I have to pay extra, blah, blah, blah. Even if I have to pay the 15% uh, land transfer extra because I'm not Canadian resident or whatever, it doesn't matter. I still need to get out, okay? Every, every few years in the world, you know, some catastrophe happens and people need to move. Uh, most are unfortunate and they can't really do anything. They have to stay and face what they have to stay. And, uh, you know, each nation had, th had this happen. And uh, now it's happening. But the difference is that we're all connected now. We're all connected so intimately and closely that you can't say it's happening in Hawk and it's not going to affect me in Canada. It's going to affect you right away. Reject this call. Okay. It's going to affect you right away. Therefore, you got to be prepared for it. So if you're from Hong Kong and you need to buy property in Canada, give me a shout. Yossi Kaplan, I'll help you out. And I'll, I'll show you. Um, you can transfer your funds, HSBC, <coughs> or through the bank. You can do all the legal stuff in Hong Kong, uh, in a Canadian licensed, uh, Ontario licensed lawyer there, or do an affidavit and bring it to Canada. Um, the finance, if you need it, we can help you. And if you don't need it, that's even better. Just buy for cash. And the legal stuff, we can also do for you. It's not a problem. The lawyers in Ontario are fantastic. They're all uh, licensed. They're all uh, protected. I never had a problem in 20 years of trading, okay? So there you go. Um, I wish everyone good luck. I wish everyone peace. I wish everyone to sleep well at night. And appreciate what you have, my friends. Especially appreciate Canada. This is Yossi Kaplan. That's it.